good one? May we bow. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for those that are here. We ask that you be with us, and we ask that you bless this city and all of its residents. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we would like to welcome all our guests and visitors here tonight, and we do have some uh, special guests who will make a presentation on our history uh, uh, regarding a history museum. Uh, uh, Ms. Stephanie Joyner and Lisa Tressler. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. I'm Stephanie Joyner, the Executive Director of the Cherokee County Historical Society, and I am joined by our Board Treasurer, Lisa Tressler. So first and foremost, we would like to extend our gratitude to the City of Canton for all of, our, all of your past support. Um, your partnership has enabled us to welcome over 20,000 people to the Canton Visitor Center and the Cherokee County History Museum over the past six years. For over 40 years, the Historical Society has provided secure stewardship of our county's heritage through our archives, advocated for historic preservation, provided an extensive database and library to assist researchers, and educated all ages in the rich heritage of our area. And for over a decade, the county has been gracious enough to provide space for our office and archives, and recently our small museum and visitor center. We love being in downtown Canton. However, due to the need for more courtroom space, our time in the historic courthouse is limited. We're very grateful to the county for providing this space, but we're also excited about the possibilities as we create a more permanent location designed for our mission. We are in the early stages of planning a capital campaign and creating a vision for that new museum. Stephanie is sharing exhibit renderings and the capital campaign material that will be going to prospective donors. After a careful study of our needs and for maximum community outreach, we've determined that our new history center should provide 4,000 square feet for office, archive, and research room space and another 6,000 square feet for a modern interactive museum. We are currently looking for a suitable location. In the meantime, we would like to share a video that will showcase our vision for the museum and that will also be the foundation for our upcoming capital campaign. Cherokee County's history has been in the making for centuries and we have a story to share. The narrative of our people, cities and communities bridges the gap between historic distinction and modern vision, echoing North Georgia history with a very special sense of place and time. Weaving its path from the first Native Americans who made their home here, to the dawn of the Cherokee Nation, from the gleaming prospects of gold rush fervor, to the despair and conflict of the Civil War. Through thriving mill towns, to pioneering marble, agriculture, and poultry industries, Cherokee County's history is as diverse and fascinating as its people. Today, the Cherokee County Historical Society embarks upon a new journey as we lay the foundation for a state-of-the-art history museum, an impressive venue designed to showcase our extensive archival collection and an innovative, immersive experience for those who desire to explore our county's unique heritage. Imagine a new Cherokee County History Museum that engages visitors by telling the human stories behind our history using artifacts, storyboards, and stunning audiovisuals. These personal narratives will bring our history to life. Envision world-class exhibit galleries with interactive panels, large format touch screens, and dynamic visuals designed to engage all generations. Visualize a museum providing an interactive haven for students, helping them understand our history and how it relates to the rest of the world with beginner tools, accessible standards, and research facility. As a regional tourist destination, the Cherokee County History Museum will create a positive economic impact for our community as a valuable cultural asset to attract new businesses, residents, and visitors. Museums of this caliber are only possible through the collective generosity of individuals, corporations, foundations, and government entities. 
As a valuable shareholder in our community, we invite you to make history with us as we launch our most dynamic endeavor to date, the Cherokee County History Museum Capital Campaign. Your donation helps ensure the influence of our history makers spans the generations to follow. Join us as we build the bridge from Cherokee's history makers of the past to those of the future. And as you can see from the video, the museum will truly be an asset for Cherokee County. So we thank you for your time and for allowing us to share our vision for the new history museum. And we're hoping it will create a bridge from the past to the future. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? We're very, in the early very good planning job. stages <laughs> while in the oak grant design. Of course. But, but yeah, we're in the early early planning stages. Is it premature to ask where you're looking to put the new museum? We are open to all ideas right now. That's, and that's part of the reason for coming to you. You know, So we're going to be asking people to help us find a location. And now that you've seen our vision, maybe you can keep that in mind as, as locations become available. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Good job. You know we're all about history. We just spent two and a half million dollars for a piece of history. <laughs> okay. Okay. I apologize to Sandy because I I noticed it before you turned the light on. That's right. It actually I started sending you a text that I was apologizing. <laughs> I don't intentionally skip over yet the public service announcements, so we're going to go back and get the public service announcements now. Thank you. Coffee with a Cop is Friday, March 16th at the Canton YMCA from 8 to 10. Cornhole League play is coming to downtown Canton. Cornhole in Cannon Park begins on Tuesday, March 20th and continues through May 15th. Games will be scheduled at either 6.45, 7.30, or 8.15 in the park. The second monthly gathering of One Million Cups Cherokee, or 1MC, a joint partnership between Cherokee Office of Economic Development and the Woodstock Office of Economic Development, the City of Holly Springs, the City of Waleska, Reinhardt University, and the City of Canton, will be at the Canton Theater on Wednesday, March, 30, March 21st at 9 a.m. 1MC allows local entrepreneurs and startups to connect and engage with the community and for the community to learn more about its startup businesses. A startup company in Cherokee County will also be sharing their business model. The event is free and open to the public. Please come and support our law, local entrepreneurs. Contact Economic Development Manager Matthew Thomas for more details. The next meeting of a novel idea will take place at East Main Cafe on Wednesday, March 21 at 7 p.m. The March theme is a memoir and nonfiction. Georgia Trust Canton Expedition, Saturday, March 24, 9.30 to 5 p.m. The Georgia Trust invites you to participate in this tour of beautifully restored homes, intriguing historic sites of Canton during this day-long expedition. Attendees will experience the rich history of Canton and explore a variety of beautifully restored homes from the late 19th and early 20th centuries located in Canton's National Register Historic District. Tickets can be purchased for the tour only can be purchased for the tour only or to include lunch and a closing reception. For more information to purchase tickets, you can go to georgiatrust.org. Driving Miss Daisy will be at the Canton Theater continuing through March 18th. Tickets are $15 and $18 and can be purchased through the website CherokeeTheater.org. March 24, Aiden Sinclair, Master Illusionist, will perform one night only at 7 p.m. Aiden appeared on America's Got Talent and has worked with Penn and Teller. Call the Canton Theater for more information. Cherokee Arts Center. King's Academy presents Annie the Musical with four performances on Friday through Sunday, March 23 and 25th. Tickets are available at kingsacademytix.com. Cherokee County Historical Society will host the 24th Annual Preservation Awards Banquet on Friday, March 16th 
at 7 p.m. at the Bluffs Conference Center. Canton Art and Wine Walk will be presented by Canton Main Street, April 6th and 7th in historic Canton, down, downtown Canton. Tickets on sale now for Friday, April 6th, 5 through 8 p.m. and Saturday, April 7th, 2 to 6 p.m. There are 20 wine tasting stops on the walk and more than 20 local artists will be located at various retail shops. For more information and to purchase advanced tickets, you can go to downtowncantonga.com. Okay, anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and now to, uh, for consideration to approve the agenda, is there any changes or additions that need to be made to the agenda? have a motion to uh, approve as presented. Uh, Mr. Goodwin seconded the motion uh, to Mr. Grant's motion. Any other dis discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, many? <laughs> Opposed, no. Okay. The agenda is approved. Consider uh, the minutes, the next item on the agenda, the uh, draft minutes from the March 1st meeting. Are there any changes or corrections to be made to those? Mayor, I don't yes, think it's very, it's very big, but on page six, okay. when we're talking about um, the paragraph where we're talking about the SPLOS paving projects, it's the second paragraph under the city manager's report. It says from Hamilton State Bank to Campbell Funeral Home, I think it's South Canton. South Canton Funeral Home. Yes, that'd be correct. Not a big deal, but. Well, and I'm sure it right. sounded like Campbell <laughs> on the tape yeah. <laughs> instead okay. of South Canton. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Glad you caught that. Anyone else? Okay. Do I have a motion that we approve those minutes with that change? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goodwin made the motion. Mr. Uh, Mr. Yon second, seconded the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. <clears throat> okay. All righty. Uh, uh, informational update, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board update uh, for the Mayor and Council. If you recall at the last meeting, <clears throat> Ms. Stout, who isn't with us tonight, mentioned a couple of projects that the Parks and Rec Advisory Board were entertaining uh, for Etowah and Heritage Parks. Um, we looked at those and come up with some cost proposals for those. Uh, basically, the board just wants to know if that's something that city might be interested in before they move forward with going out and you know getting bids and deciding exactly where things might be located and what have you um, one of the one of the items that was um, noted on the proposal was basically to have an area at a river park close to the concession stands kind of up on that top hill so when you're pulling in the park on the left where it's a little bit higher uh, having an area up there where perhaps people could play volleyball or, or things like that uh, we identified a um, multi-use court um, process. It's basically a concrete court, and then there's this heavy rubber uh, plastic system that basically sits on top of that. It's lined off, uh, and it can be done in the size of a full court basketball, so you can have basketball going on, and it's multi-purpose in that you can ha also have you know everything from volleyball net installed on it. You can break it up into smaller courts. Uh, there's one that the company has that's got shuffleboard with it. There's several different options. Uh, basically what we price that out at is the full court plus the concrete was about $34,000 worth of materials uh, for that specific uh, use. Um, they talked about swings and benches putting some swings, benches, picnic tables, and things like that closer to the river at Heritage Park. Um, and this week we started doing some hand clearing uh, at Heritage Park along the river with Public Works, and so opening up some of those views along the river there. Um, based on our current swings that we've been purchasing that are, that are locally sourced, those are about $1,400 a piece installed. Um, and so we'll probably look for several of those to go in that area along Heritage Park close to the river. Um, same thing with benches. Benches are anywhere between three and $500, depending on the style that you get and what have you. Um, 
there is an outdoor gym system um, that basically is, uh, we've looked at, it's basically plyometrics based, and so it's a, it's a pad, a concrete pad, and it's got different uh, stations on them that basically you use your own body weight as the, as the weight for doing the exercise equipment. Uh, it's set up now with uh, technology so that you can download an app and it will show you a routine that you made based on your time or what you have to use that equipment. Um, or you can scan the equipment to find out how to properly use it or different options for use of it. Um, what we had looked at uh, with Parks and Rec was basically putting it close to the YMCA but in Heritage Park so that people could do some outdoor exercise in that particular location. Uh, the manufacturer that we found, uh, the cost of a gym like that was about $80,000 uh, uh, for it to be you know, outdoor all-weather gym, and then we'd be looking for about $10,000 in concrete for the pad for that particular gym. Um, we've also looked at some parts, uh, or some prices in some, um, into some various outdoor style tables. There's a company we've identified that does, uh, basic, basically it's a concrete ping pong table. Uh, it's got a permanent net on it, um, not a fabric net, but it's a divider, so to speak. It's lined off in concrete and it's ADA accessible as well. Uh, one of the thoughts we had was maybe putting one of those close to that pavilion at, at um, Etowah River Park. Um, and if we wanted to in the future hire somebody part-time during the better seasons of the year to work that concession stand out there, they could check out ping pong uh, equipment and what have you. Uh, those tables are, are about $6,000 each installed, but again, that's a concrete permanent structure. That way we don't have to worry about weathering or moving it around and stuff like that. They also make concrete uh, chess or checker tables uh, that are both uh, ADA accessible and could also be accessible from a stool on either side that's permanently attached, those are about $2,500. Um, we're also pricing at this point some additional parking. Uh, so right now, if you were to turn next to uh, Mr. Plain Car Wash to get to Heritage Park, you know, we've got that little area of parking there. Uh, what we're looking into is taking a drive across the trail as it comes into the park and parking in the back bit closer to the river there's a lot of land back there that we could we could add for parking I think we counted how many places did we think we could get in about 50 parking spaces back there uh, the area would be about 160 foot by 120 feet so we're working on the pricing for that if that's put in place what we would bring back as a recommendation is to take another concrete trail closer to the river edge and just make it straight along where you would put in swings and picnic tables in that view of the river there. Right now, the trail is pretty far back off the river as it relates to the park. So those are just some thoughts that, um, that Parks and Recreation has had and some prices to put along that. I think what they're looking for is maybe some of your thoughts on some of those, if those are things you want to pursue, if there's one or two of those that you really like, if you really would like to get them in place quickly so we can bring back an actual cost an actual bid to get the work done in a time table. Okay. And Ms. Stout's here, she might be able to answer some questions the board might have, but I think that's basically what we just covered. Mr. Grant. Well, first of all, I think they're great recommendations. I appreciate the committee's work on, on these. And um, I think, you know, the swing benches, tables along the river, it seems to be a natural because it's like our top priority. Um, so I think anything we can do to kind of help activate the river uh, and activity along the river, appreciation of the river is, is a natural. Um, and uh, again, I think they're all great ideas. I guess it just depends on what we have budgeted and what could be done with Park and Rex Fund and, and SPLOSC. Uh, I personally love the idea of the plyometrics gym. And I, I'm kind of surprised at the cost of that. It, it seemed reasonable um, when I was, last year when I was in Australia, they had plyometrics in, in every park was the plyometrics pads were there and they were just used by all the time. So they were really cool and I think that, that would be really appreciated. I, I mean, I think all these things would help even further activate our parks, but uh, those two things I think are, are really great. And the additional parking and heritage I think would just, you know, be invaluable. Uh, there's not enough parking there. 
Um, and again, if we are adding you know, amenities there, uh, it only makes sense. Um, and I've heard you know, people have requested or complained that there's not enough parking there, and especially you know, closer in to the park. Um, so I think that's, you know, I would personally like to see the cost of that. I mean, if we can get 50 plus spaces back there, uh, I'd just be interested to see what that may cost us. But uh, again, I like all of the, you know, all the ideas, um, but those things kind of intrigue me the most. My personal thought. Mr. Eskins. I, I would echo a lot of what Bill said. I love the way he said it. Any way that we can activate the river is, I think, a, a huge win. Um, the season's upon us, and you know everybody's going to be itching to get out with the weather and whatnot. So I, I definitely think everything that was discussed is is really great, and anything we can do to I think, prioritize you know, the balancing the river and, and the parks and everything is, is great stuff. Uh, specifics though, on the budget, is there what what? What is the budget, or how do we how do we fund this? These would these would likely come out of impact fees. Impact fees, okay. okay. And so what we could do is we could sit back down with, say, the board, and list out the prices for all of these, and, and get with Miss Bingham as to what's available, and say this is how we would fund it. This is what we could do this fiscal year. Uh, this is what the impact fee fund has in it, and maybe we didn't budget all of that this year, but maybe we could do a budget amendment so we could get them done, but be able to bring that back to you. Good. No, I, I think I, I use the term a lot, being really scrappy, and I think anything that we can do to be really scrappy and just get out there and, and really start activating uh, sure. our, our assets that, that we have now, that would be great. This is good. Mr. Good. Uh, this particular project is very dear to my heart. I've been in recreation ever since I came on the board. I've really pushed it, but, um, and, and I, I'm part of that committee. But um, one thing that we talked about years ago, and uh, I don't know if that was in your, I couldn't hear everything. But, uh, we talked about possibly having something like a small basketball court or a uh, shuffleboard court. I know uh, those were in the mayor's uh, uh, needs uh, years ago when we talked about doing that um, but you know we talked about this at our retreat and uh, we looked at things that they've already done down in Columbus so uh, I think it's an excellent opportunity that for us to move forward uh, I think we should you know move move forward as fast as we can but we have to find out what the budget is I, sure. I, I think most everybody on, on this council be agreeable to that thank you yeah, we do have a, a plan. I don't know if the Recreation Commission has, has been privy to that or not. That was done some several years ago uh, of, of the courts and so forth where they could be located, which is just outside of the flood area. Uh, at, and there's not that much outside the flood area there at uh, Heritage for sure. But uh, there could be some basketball courts or, or uh, pickleball courts and stuff like that there, which... Uh, I, I think would be good. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what an outdoor gym is totally uh, or whether it's a, it's waterproof. I hope it is. Oh, sure. It's not. Including it, the electronics or then any of that? It does there? not have electronics it have with it. Okay. It's, bas it's basically there would be codes on the actual uh, devices. If you've got your smartphone, you could take a picture of that code and it would show you a video of how that piece of equipment I got you. works. Okay. So there's no technology related to the actual gym. There's no moving parts in the actual gym. It's all things where you could do sit-ups and curls and lunges and all these things based on your own body weight. I like the idea of extending the parking for sure and, and uh, the concrete uh, slab down close, closer to the river if we can get it and for some picnic tables and so forth. But that will present additional work for the uh, because you know, you're going to have garbage when people have picnics. Sure. There's garbage. You're going to have to have some kind of garbage cans that hopefully aren't going to float away or going to be taken care of every time, uh, you know, the flood comes in, even, you know, routinely maintained, I assume, like we do at the other uh, Etowah Park and, uh, and uh, bowling probably. So, yeah, I think some, some, some good ideas there. I want to ask. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, 
could you bring us up to date on the water fountains that we are planning to put in the parks? Yes, ma'am. And also the distance, you know, when you're walking, you're gone a half mile in, in, in yes, all the parks. Could you bring us up to date? The fountains are in. We have those at Public Works. They have not been installed because we have not laid the water line right. yet. We, we don't Might freeze. We don't, yeah, we don't traditionally lay water lines in the winter. So that's a project that they were trying to put on in, hopefully in the next three weeks. Next week is scheduled for okay, next week. Okay, good. Yeah. As it relates to the signs, we've kind of held off on those because we've got a company who's doing a sign study of the whole city, mm -hmm. and any markers we might want to put in the parks will want to be consistent right. with the other signage that we're doing. But we have a plan to get all that done. Yes. That's all I need to say. Over to y'all. Well, I just kind of wanted to echo what Mr. Goodwin and the mayor were saying. Um, I would like to see some more amenities I'm not saying I'm not in favor of taking heritage as totally active, but making it a little more active than it is than just a walking park and give people them some more amenities to use in that park. And so I think that's a great idea. Sure. And I love everything y'all have, have been talking about. Well, I'm glad you said that because, you know, I really don't think heritage ought to be for organized sports, actually. We had that for a period of time there and when it really wasn't, had, had not been approved. And, and there were some issues there. And that's back, you know, then we decided, well, if, if they're gonna try to do that, we'll put up that ugly net that went the length of that between the river and the first walking trail. And that's what we did. And, and the consensus at that time was, is that if they were gonna uh, play soccer or whatever, on, they'd do it on the other side of that netting so those balls didn't, weren't crossing the uh, walking trails all the time. With the condition that when Etowah River opened up, that net fencing would come down, which meant that the organized soccer was to be over there and I assume could be potentially at, at bowling where they'd been having organized soccer uh, earlier. But that net would come down when we, would, when we opened up Etowah River Park, and it did and we took it down. And I, and I really don't think we, I don't really think we won't have some of these organized sports. And I'm telling you, they were organized. There were uniforms and everything playing there, you know. But now they've got a good place to play in um, uh, Etowah, in my opinion. Uh, Ms. McGrew. Yes, thank you. I like everything you've talked about. And I'd like to know if there is any way we can get more playground equipment over at Heritage. At Heritage? Mm -hmm. I think that was. I think that may have been in part of that plan. I'd have to need to look back and see uh, if, if if some of that wasn't in part of that out of the floodplain area. Mm -hmm. The all abilities playground is crowded all the time now. It's a great hit. I'm so pleased to see that, and I'd really like to see some more mommy and me strings um, at Heritage and at Etowah. But I like all of the suggestions. Thank you so much. Thank you. I uh, had one more thing. Um, as you well know, my personal thing is a really good, nice, large dog run somewhere in one of the parks. And I would like to s keep that in mind as trying to find a place where we can do that. Where it's, I know we allow the dogs in Etowah Park, but I'd like to be able to take, have a place for them to go off leash and run. and. I just want to keep that in mind as we go forward. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Grant. Yeah, I was just uh, want, wondered if we could, on the um, April work session, just because the Heritage Park active passive keeps coming up, and I know we've talked about it, but if we could add that to, as a discussion item on the work session. I mean, I went back and, you know, last July 7th or 2016, July 7th, we had the, you know, the, the proposal by Mr. Gilliam at the time. His proposal was to take down the net and make the park active. It was one proposal that was in the memorandum there. And, and we agreed. I went back to watch the video, and the video the audio goes in and out, so it's really difficult. But we, I think we agreed that night to take the netting down you oh, know, yeah. immediately. And the, but the minutes of that meeting says, you know, that we're going to vote on taking the netting down at the next meeting, but then it's not on the July 22nd 
meeting agenda or 21st meeting agenda um, but at the July 7th meeting video video you can hear Mr. Yon say you know I think this would be a great item for the Parks and Recreation we talked about well what kind of activities would be right. appropriate for Etowah Park you know pick up games and just kicking the soccer ball would be fine but I don't know what was decided I recall making the motion to take down the net and make it active as one motion but I don't know if that's because I can't hear the video but but he did that and I think we all agreed that was a good idea uh, but then that was you know July 7 2016 but the Parks and Rec Board's first meeting was March 9 2017 nine months later and I don't think they've ever discussed that item um, and then you know and then the removal of the netting wasn't on the July 21st meeting and it wasn't discussed in that video so I don't know that we ever like officially I mean I think the park's been kind of considered active and I've always said you know passive recreation makes no sense to me but I think you know I think I do think it'd be a good idea for parks and recs so these are the things I think it's as simple as just part uh, posting you know etiquette rules and saying you know do this and in, in this area and don't you know it could be something that simple but I think it would be good just kind of clarify things for everyone what you know what is allowed and what's not and you know sort of organized sports are on the in these parks in these areas and you know this is what's allowed in these fields or something but I think it'd be good to clarify it since since it came up so okay uh, one else so is, is the decision are we gonna come back on April work session with yes. a budget so proposal. Parks and Recreation will have a meeting the end of this month um, and we'll speak with them at that meeting about all of these things and kind of the feedback that came back from council on these things. We'll have better pricing on it, uh, understanding what's available in the budget. If it's not in the budget where those funds might currently be available that would require a budget amendment or what have you, and then we'll put it on the April work session for y'all to uh, bless moving forward here from a financial standpoint. I think that's good. I think we got people that would, some that would prefer a passive park and some that would prefer active park, certainly. Uh, and we did have some com complaints when the organization, when the organized sports were going on. We even had had people injured on bicycles that were, <laughs> the mayor of Baltimore, as a matter of fact, broke his collarbone uh, trying to avoid a, uh, a walker on the uh, uh, trail at one point. So, I mean, I think there's a certain amount of, of, of need for a quiet, leisurely stroll without fear of, of getting hit by a soccer ball or a bicycle, even, to be honest with you. But anyway, that's just me. Uh, anything else? Okay. We don't have anyone more than 10-minute public input period, so we'll move, move along. Uh, under old business, discussion and possible action of uh, assets for the auction. Stringer. Thank you, Mayor and Council. You have before you uh, the list of the assets that were requested to be placed on the auction. Uh, just a reminder that auction will occur on May 12th, not April 14th. Uh, I'm open to any questions y'all may have or if you want to remove or add any assets on, on there to the list. Anybody have any questions or objection to any of the junk we had on there? Okay. Thank you. You, you got you, you next. Oh, you got something else on here. Don't you? Discussion possible action of proposed budget amendment, SPLOS six and impact fee fund. Um, before we go on, if oh, we, we need to vote on the other one. Don't we? Yes, okay. Do we have a motion that we go ahead and, and auction those uh, selected assets? Do we have a motion, Ms. McGrew. Mr. Young seconded motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank you. Okay. Now, poss uh, discussion pop possible action of proposed budget amendment of SPLOS 6 and the impact fee fund. Any questions there? We have discussed this. Do you want to give a brief summary or anything on that? Sure. On this particular budget amendment, this was once again just to clear up uh, uh, some of the issues revolving around the consolidation of the fire department uh, with the right. county. 
Okay. Mr. Young made the motion. Mr. Grant seconded the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Next item, discussion and possible action and proposed year-end budget amendment. Motion to approve. <laughs> well, we have a motion to approve. Any discussion? Now, these are the amendments to clear up and adjust yes. things on, based on the audit, I yes. assume. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Item D, discussion and possible action and proposed FY 2018 SPLOS budget. Anybody have any questions? You have a motion to approve? Okay. So we have a second. Second. Mr. Yon seconded uh, Ms. McGrew's motion. Uh, any other discussion or questions about that? Okay. If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Item E, discussion of possible action to municipal services agreement between Cherokee County and the City of Canton concerning animal, the animal control ordinance and impoundment services. You've had this uh, proposed ordinance for some time. Are there any questions? Uh, motion to approve. Okay, Ms. Wilson made the uh, motion to approve. Mr. Goodman seconded that motion. Any other questions or discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Man, we're going right through these, aren't we? Okay, item, item F, uh, discussion and possible action of case AX 1801-001, proposed annexation of 42.07 acres by uh, Perilous Nice LLC, located at 2241, 2243, 2247 and 2249 coming highway known as Canton Exchange. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you should have a copy of uh, email from Mr. Schuyler along uh, with uh, Perlis Nice in which they've uh, requested that this uh, uh, annexation as well as the next item, the zoning, be tabled to uh, work through and clarify some issues relative to uh, Cherokee County uh, permits inspections uh, as well as uh, uh, some landscaping things of that nature. Uh, part of that also uh, was a discussion in regards to the uh, uh, TAP fees and City Council's previously approved 50% uh, reduction of uh, TAP fees uh, upon uh, annexation of the property. Uh, city manager and I have uh, had discussions with Perlis Nice, and uh, we would recommend City Council to authorize uh, that 50% reduction now until uh, we have uh, means to uh, recoup the money, if you will, down the road once City Council does uh, formally annex and zone the property. Now, um, <clears throat> the, uh, they've asked for it to be tabled or postponed. And if so, for what period of time? I guess we would need to know that, right? Um, uh, they had requested till the next meeting. City Council could uh, table the matter uh, uh, for 30 days, or if uh, City Council and the applicant are in agreement to a longer period for this annexation to be tabled, that certainly could be done as well. Uh, Mr. Grant. I assume that regardless of how how long we table this for, that if we go ahead and grant the 50% reduction in TAP fees, if something happens at any point down the line where they choose not to annex or we choose not to approve the annexation, then the remainder of the TAP fees will be, be payable. We have the option. We can go out there and cut the water off. Okay. Kind of being blunt about it. <laughs> Do you know if the applicant thinks that in 30 days they would have the information to come back before us? 30 days, or if I uh, wanted to uh, table it for a longer period of time. I think uh, Perlis Nice's main concern was the 50% uh, tap. tap reduction. Yeah, I think, it, you know, if, if the council were to approve the 50%. We, we've approved 50% reduction contingent on them annexing, but if we go ahead, uh, and, and there's several reasons basically, then I'm not going to uh, 
we'd ask that, but that, that it makes sense from a city perspective, at least in my opinion, to delay annexation. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't see any uh, downside to going ahead and granting the 50% reduction in the fee because you do have a, a way of getting it back ultimately if the decision were not to annex, you know, kind of doubt. Right. I, I agree also, and, and I, I think I read somewhere that, that the reason, the, the sole reason for annex, the annexation request was to get the TAP fee reduction. So I just wonder, I mean, if we're gr gonna grant that, can we, should we just table it, you know, indefinitely for now until it comes, I mean, in 30 days, if they're getting TAP fee reduction, is anything gonna change in 30 days? That's really, I mean, it was, it, I think that in the next two weeks we would probably have a pretty quick meeting with, with Cherokee County to work out, you know, what that needs to look like. Um, certainly understand they want to make sure they have, as the issuing authority for the permits, you know, the ability to see over those permits, and that's not what we're looking to try to get away from at all. Um, we just timed our annexation to try to the end so that we were applied for services, but the 50% was never a question when I was asked. Um, I mean, it, it, 30 days, 60 days doesn't really More than just the one project that's out there. There's three other buildings that still have to be built overall. Um, and I think we can just kind of draw a line in the sand and say, you know, okay, everything that's on this side of it's going to stay with Cherokee, this side of it's going to come with Cameron, which is kind of how we anticipated Cameron would happen this meeting. Anything that stays with Cherokee will stay there. Anything new will come with Cameron. Um, but I think we still just need to work out how to do it with Cherokee County as a whole. I mean, yeah. I'd also like to see, you know, from the city's perspective, I agree, Mr. Mayor, that. How does the time affect us and, you know, sort of permit fees and, and you know, the taxes and, and sort of what, what timetable is optimum for us as far as, you know, collecting taxes and, you know, from the moment of annexation, we have to provide services. So um, I guess to me, like the timetable, we need to be driving that somewhat and, and so I, I, I want to have a better grasp of right. you know, what the financial impact to the city is as well, so we, we, we understand both sides. Because I, I think it, I mean, you guys definitely know better, but it's really we're concerned with when, when the property tax line is when we start collecting property taxes. So we want yeah. to make sure that we're in before whatever that date is at the end of the year of January 1. Or right. As long, as long as we have them annexed before January 1 of 2019, they will be on paying city property tax for 2009. If we were to annex in today, we would not receive any property tax until December or January, of, well, December of 2019, almost two years. So it doesn't really make sense to do that. It's better. I think if we get it, the later this year that we can do it, from that point alone, now there may be other circumstances, from that point alone uh, would make sense for the city to, to annex it later in the year. Uh, Mr. Grant, you have something else? One other thing, I know we have discussed sort of the discrepancy between sign ordinance in the county and city and the city being more restrictive. I think this has been discussed at some point, but 
is there a willingness on behalf of the developer to, in anticipation of annexation, to consider adhering to the city sign ordinances? So for so our rezoning application for all of this property, we actually have a condition of zoning that we have to abide by the city use of streetscapes for that corridor as well as pool room and neon sign on the wall sign that are more necessary to impact um, development. We're, we're actually more lenient on the wall sign, so. so the piece that's the most concerning would be the monument sign and they have to stick to our ordinance on that design. Thank you. Yeah. So what, were the variance, what are the variances for? On some of the side, wasn't there some variances filed? Yeah, so we had to do a lot of variances. The way Cherokee County Interpret works, uh, the, the wall length that has to do with uh, vertical bump outs and four and six um, four inch vertical bump outs won't allow a 10 to 20 square foot for one single barricade sign. Forty foot tall facade with two three hundred foot off the road limits of the sign that they can't go above the road and five hundred feet away. So that's what most of the variances were. Was those four square footage um, sort of kind of nasty scale of what they put in the wall. That's a lot of variances so far. Okay. The staff might suggest City Council table this till the third uh, meeting in April. Allow the City Manager and I, as well as Perlis Nice representative, to work through some of these issues, uh, get back with the county, uh, get a little more information together for a uh, city council, and uh, at that point in time, uh, see uh, where things stand. Okay, Ms. Grant. That seems a little aggressive. I mean, would it, would the first meeting in May make sense? Would that me, affect me you? Days, I mean, I think it's more important that we have the agreement in place than that the, the agreement with the county aside. Patton, do, do you guys feel comfortable with the first meeting in April? Is that, is that mine? Well, I was talking about the third Thursday meeting uh, oh, the in third. April, which is approximately a month. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, is your schedule, I mean, is the schedule for completion of that finite enough to make an agreement very firm at this point? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, you know, right now, I'd say we're probably shooting for mid-May to be completely out ready for site work and have the guys in the field working. Um, maybe if everybody works site work by then, we'll shoot the meeting pretty close. But you can see huh. the main parking lot, it's on grade DAD down. It's just the, the, the remains of the secondary access that goes out to the east side that it was still trying to fill in. Unfortunately, we had some material that went out in grade three today that we're going to have to uh, just finish up first. So, you know, we've, we had more success, I would say, you know, you know, the month of December moving dirt than we have since then. Um, but as far as getting some fill in, it's the second half of December that all we had to do that. We need some more dirt to put the roof on the house. So, um, yeah. I don't know what we're going to do that. <laughs> but we need to that. Can't predict. Uh, uh, Mr. Patton has recommended that we postpone this until the second meeting in April. Is that correct? To, is, there, is that Council concur with that, or we should, we should have a motion if, if that's what you want to do. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Young seconded uh, Mr. Grant's motion. Uh, any other discussion or questions? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. So we'll bring this back up on our uh, April 21st. Fifth, no, April 19th. 19th. April 19th meeting, third Thursday. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Thank and you. Council members. Excuse me, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Do sorry. we need to vote on the 50% reduction now? We probably do need to vote as to grant the 50% uh, reduction in fees up front now because we agreed to do it upon mm -hmm. annexation, but uh, in motion order to do to it grant. beforehand. Yeah, okay. You, you want to make that motion? I do. Second motion. Okay, Mr. Goodman seconded uh, Ms. McGrew's motion. Um, Can I just, I just ask a question? Can, 
there a history lesson or something? I just, I'm not familiar with the 50% reduction. It would cost the, you know, is there anything? Well, the, the, dialogue the, the idea behind that was that we're gonna make it up in property tax. Okay. That, that was the idea. It may take three or four years, but we'll, we'll make it up eventually, and then the property tax will be on there forever. And that, I mean, that's sort of, and, and it makes sense from a service standpoint, too. I mean, we've got Canton Marketplace there inside the city. The police theoretically have across the street have no authority whatsoever in that highly uh, dense commercial area there. And so it, it makes sense from a service standpoint to do that, I think. And, and we came up with a 50% rate based on the fact that the city has a reduced rate at Riverstone and a reduced rate downtown. So we already have a program in place. So it's, okay. Yeah, there's some that's been already some covered. Some precedents. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And also the uh, council had previously agreed to that amount in an earlier vote, uh, early in the year, so that, or last year. So, um, one question uh, procedurally: the motion is to grant the 50 percent reduction. Do we need to make that conditioned upon annexation? Right. I think so. Conditioned upon annexation, and if that annexation doesn't occur, the Full, thing full amount is due. I amend my motion. Okay. And it's seconded by Mr. Goodwin. Okay. I get it. Okay. Um, any other questions? Good. Did you have something else? To, you have something else to say? Okay. Anybody? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. 50%. Okay. Um, the zoning part will is uh, not pertinent any longer. So we'll move on down to discussion of certified city of ethics. All I, all I want to make sure there is that everyone has, has questions. If they have any questions or comments, they want to make changes or whatever, Mr. Grant. Uh, yes, and um, again, I, I fully support <laughs> having the ethics ordinance. Um, I did a little bit of research on this. I certainly want to do more. And again, I think as we discussed, the original ordinance was based on a, a template recommended from, from GMA from mm -hmm. 2001. I think there were some uh, updates in 2015. Um, I have noticed that there, several cities recently have really updated their ordinances and strengthened them a, a lot. They're, they're really strong and, and um, for instance, one thing they seem to be doing on this sort of ethics panel is, which I think is a good idea, is, is that they are, uh, you know, for Milton, for instance, has a panel of, or a pool of 15 people, and Roswell has a pool, I think, of 14 people that have to meet certain qualifications, you know, the residents of the city have to be a year. Certain qualifications, I mean, like ours, but, um, and then they serve, they're in that, that pool for, I think these are two years. And if the ethics hearing comes up, those three panel members are chose randomly from that pool. Um, I just thought that was a interesting and, and maybe a good way to ensure that panelists were fair on, on any given um, you know, hearing if, if it came up. Uh, that was just you know, one thing, and then one, I think the city of Milton's code includes not only city officials, but also de department directors. Um, and I know our policy manual has, has, has that in there, but I thought that was interesting. So, I mean, I just, I, I, again, I, I fully support it, and I think any, any way we could strengthen it would be good. And, and um, I just wondered if, if it was the mayor's pleasure if, if you may consider if you would may want to consider appointing a committee to kind of study this in, in depth and kind of going and looking at ours or or something I just I mean I would like to explore it further because I think it's you know again yeah, a I, great idea in any, any way we can strengthen it and make sure we all understand it better um, uh, it, it's, it's a good idea so I think panel is a pretty good idea to be honest with you I do uh, Mr. Estes. yeah I really um, I like Bill's thoughts and, and ideas there. It's uh, one of the things that concerned me as I was reading through our ordinance was kind of the you choose and it's kind of nice to have a group of people that are kind of always on standby that kind of know and are ready to go. Um, and 
kind of just in the spirit of always planning for the future. And um, so I think there's there's a lot of good best practices out there that we could certainly probably smash together and figure out ourselves that, you know, what works best. The, the only the only negative to me on that issue is I've, I've been here almost, o well, over 10 years. We hadn't had to call anybody yet. And I guess knock on wood. I know, uh, <laughs> knock on wood. But we, we would have a panel of people sitting out there that may forget they're even on that thing. You know, I don't know which I think would be possible, but it certainly makes sense. Mr. Grant. Yeah, and I think those, uh, I think that, that there are, there are two-year appointments, and I think the one like the 14 is like the mayor and council each appoints two, and they, they, they're in the pool for two years, and most of the time, I mean, they're, they're never called upon, but they do rotate, but you always maintain that number in the pool, and uh, again, you know, uh, God forbid we'd ever have to, to do it, but I just think that Again, it's not about what's happened today, but what could happen in the future. And I just thought that was a interesting way to, to look at. It. I just thought it was a more, you know, forward-looking way. It just seemed more thorough and, and more thoughtful than than the way ours is currently written. So just in reviewing, it, I thought, and we may want to do it differently. But I just thought, well, other, there are other cities that have rethought them recently and, and seem to be getting good response. You know, from what they've done and, and, and recognition from really for really going one step further, and I just thought it might be interesting to to, to entertain that. So. I think it's a good idea. We we'll, we'll take a look at that, and you know we may. Uh, I guess uh, we need to decide. You know what the selection process would be. That'd be one thing. How we would do that, uh, and 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 hopefully those people would never have to be used. <laughs> hopefully, okay. <coughs> That's some good good points there, and thank you. Uh, new business discussion, possible action, North Canton Volunteer Fire Department Easter Parade application. Oh, did I, I left that one? Sorry. Yep, skipped one again. Discussion, possible action, nonprofit funding policy. So what you have attached is the cover for that policy, the table of contents that reflects that um, that item has been added under section number or letter O and then the actual page of that policy which is page 25 happy to answer any questions any comments okay uh, I just the only the only question that I would have is is and, and make sure we have an understanding here, uh, or at least that I have an understanding. Uh, these would be, we would receive requests from those entities who, who would qualify for hotel motel tax funds. Is that, is that the bottom line? Or will there be exceptions or should we uh, allow we, exceptions? In what, that? what we will do is we will send any request that we receive to you to know that we've received that request. And then we'll evaluate whether it's eligible for the hotel tax fund. If it's not eligible for the hotel tax fund, but it provides some type of service that we think is not a gratuity, we would let you know. But the only way that would be approved would be for you to put it in the budget. So why do we need to do anything? Why don't we just bring them all here and we'll work on them one at a time. I mean, if, you, if you're going to do that anyway. It gives us the opportunity to review each of the requests and tell you whether it's really a legal request or not, something that we can actually do. Because somebody might just come in and say, hey, I'd like $10,000 for operations. Well, that's a gratuity, you know, from that extent. Yeah. Um, it gives us a process to review all of those requests before we make some type of recommendation or comment back to council. So you'll be prepared um, as to what at least our thoughts are to that request and the legalities of spending money on it. Okay. So you will you will uh, present any request to the council uh, with a statement as to whether it qualifies for hotel motel tax. Correct. Okay. 
And if it doesn't, but council thinks it's But if it doesn't, it's got nothing to do with this policy, right? Correct. At that okay. point, you would have to amend your budget, and you'd have to, you know, you'd have to do a whole different process for that. Or amend point. the policy. Or amend the policy. Okay. Is everybody clear on that? <laughs> Good. You can explain it to me in a few minutes, okay? Uh, okay. Um, is there a motion to approve that policy? So moved. We have a second. Okay, Mr. Young made the motion. Mr. Estes seconded that motion. Any other discussion or questions? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank you. Okay, now we're back to the one that I almost moved up. Discussion and possible action, North Canton Volunteer Fire Department Easter Parade application. Ms. Gold's here. She can answer any questions. As I understand it, this parade's been going on for 60 years. <laughs> and so it's an older event. Uh, and what we have tried to do, just so you know, is it relates to these special events and road closings. If the application comes in, even if it comes in for the second meeting, we've been trying to be expeditious with them. Uh, and so, but they do require your ability to approve a road closing. In this case, we're not really closing the road, we're just leaving along the road. So. We have a motion to approve that. I, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, do they have to have a liability insurance? Okay, I did not see it on the application that they submitted. So, okay, okay. Anyone else? Mr. Grant made a motion to approve. Mr. Young seconded that motion. Any other discussion or questions? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank you. City Manager report. Okay, a couple of items on here. Uh, I wanted to let you know that we received notice from the Department of Natural Resources that we can move forward with our application for the Land and Water Conservation Fund as it relates to a $100,000 grant for the trail continuation eastward. Um, we haven't received the grants, we haven't received approval for the grants, but we've received approval to continue the application process. Uh, so basically what that means is as long as we do everything they ask us to do between now and the funding, we should get the grant. Um, we do have a paving project going on right now at Marietta Highway, Univetter Butterworth intersection. Hope to have that project done in the next two weeks, including the striping, and hopefully that will provide some additional stacking capabilities for those turn lanes and basically finish out that paving section that we just ended around the South Canton funeral home. Uh, we had a meeting earlier this week um, at the Jones Building site. Uh, there were approximately 43 beams in that building on the upper floor uh, that had to be replaced, and they we're done with about 35 of them, I think, uh, over the last two weeks, so they're moving along with that. Uh, there was one detail that they were still waiting on from a civil engineer as it related to drainage from the new awning system and how that drains onto the sidewalk. As soon as that detail comes in, they'll be ready to go on the front facade of the building. Um, right now, if, if all goes well, they should be finished with phase one of the project by the end of June their anticipated finish date. Um, I also have a proposal from Atkins for a couple of different projects. Uh, as you know, we have a task order with them. Uh, one of the items that we asked them to give us some 